One of Canada's biggest attention seekers, Sarah Thompson, well, she's at it again. This time she sent out a vile, venomous tweet attacking Doug Ford and his late brother Rob. Yet, how is it that Twitter doesn't have any problem with Thompson's horrific remarks, but Twitter does take exception to those who criticize this ghoul? <laughs> Just wait till you hear the details, folks. I'm no psychiatrist, but one must ponder the question, is Sarah Thompson mentally unstable? <laughs> we have no way of knowing for sure, of course, yet judging by her public pronouncements, you gotta wonder. As chronicled in this space a few months ago, this failed politician accused TVO journalist Steve Pakin of sexual harassment. Now, without rehashing all those lurid details for those in the know, and regardless of where one sits on the political spectrum, Pakin is likely the last journalist in Canada one would ever accuse of doing something so odious. And Thompson's credibility is such that Pakin's employer didn't even suspend him for that du rigueur investigation. Indeed, it wouldn't surprise me if Thompson gets sued for defamation for that whopper. So after going down in flames with the Pakin nonsense, where does the sensational Sarah go from here? Oh, well, she's turning her sights on provincial politics now. And just check out this egregious tweet. Quote, Is it me or is Doug Ford's team is trying to make him look and act exactly like his brother? Watch, he'll gain 30 pounds and use words like folks and you all. I'm surprised he hasn't shaved his head for cancer to get the sympathy vote. End quote. Well, Thompson starts off with a form of fat shaming and then hits a perverse crescendo by wondering if Doug Ford will fake cancer to elicit sympathy? As if he even needs such an assist in terms of his impending victory come June? Secondly, what sort of a degenerate would mock someone's dearly departed brother for cheap political points? And in the department of those who live in glass houses, Thompson has the audacity to speculate on someone's head of hair. I mean, check out this mugshot. Gee, given those dreadlocks, where the hell is the cultural appropriation police? Oh, and by that, folks, I don't mean in regard to offended Jamaicans. I mean those who are devout fans of the Predator movies. You're one ugly mother... Yeah, separated at birth, right? In truth, Thompson's disgusting thought process isn't really worthy of comment. In fact, it turns out you just might be prohibited from commenting on her due to the social justice censors residing at Twitter. Case in point, someone who is quite dear to me had this to say on Twitter regarding the Thompson tweet. Quote, It amazes me that you sat at your keyboard type that vile and disgusting tweet, read it back to yourself, and hit the tweet button. The only thing you are sorry for is that you have been admonished and humiliated for it. You should hang your head in shame. You are a horrible person." End quote. And guess what happened, folks? Twitter promptly suspended this person's account. Why? Well, Twitter says she, quote, violated our rules against promoting or encouraging suicide or self-harm, end quote. <laughs> what the hell? At first I was gobsmacked in trying to make sense of this when I reread the tweet and then reread it again, and then I had an epiphany. The gatekeepers at Twitter apparently believe that the well-worn phrase, hang your head in shame, is actually encouragement for someone to pursue hanging, as in dangling from a noose. Did a human at Twitter flag this phrase, or was it an automated process? I mean, I know we live in an era of artificial intelligence, but this qualifies as a new form of AI, artificial idiocy. Dang. My mind is going. Moral of the story, Sarah, here's six figures worth of free political advice for you. 
please subscribe to the old Mark Twain quote, namely, it is better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you are a fool than to open it and remove all doubt. And secondly, in light of Twitter's either natural or manufactured censorship stupidity, for the love of God, if there's a right-leaning billionaire out there who truly believes in freedom of speech and is thinking about investing in a social media platform, huh, there's no time like the present. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, the Rebel has a brand new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.